for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Hi, and welcome. In this video on CSS, I want to talk a little bit about two concepts, inheritance and precedence. And both of these are related in the way that they both determine how a style is applied to a particular element, or whether or not an item is applied um, to a particular element. This, along with descendant selectors, is a, a very powerful technique in CSS. Well, first, let's go ahead and take a look at this document here. It's a very simple HTML document. And you're going to notice the nesting here. I've got HTML on the very outside. And then I've got my body tag. And then I have a div with the ID of wrapper. Another div inside of that called box. And then I've got some content inside of the box. And I close both of those divs, the body, and finally close my HTML tag. Now, when we're talking about inheritance, basically what we mean is that if we apply a particular um, style to a particular element, any elements that are contained within that element will also take on that style if there isn't a rule that's closer to it. So, for example, let's take the uh, wrapper tag right here. I'm going to come into my CSS, and I'm going to come here to wrapper, and I'm going to go ahead and say that the color is going to be red. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put my red color in there, save it, and when I click over here, you're going to see everything became red. And that's because everything that I can see here is actually contained in the wrapper div. So the box div inherited that property. So did this unordered list that I've ID'd as list, and this list item that I've ID'd as Peter. So let's see what would happen if I applied a color to this ID of list right here. Let's see what would happen. Come back in here and scroll down a little bit. I'm going to click in my list style, and I'm going to say the color is going to be blue. We'll save that and click over here, and you're going to see that those three items that are contained within list became blue, but everything outside of list remained that red color. And again, when we look at the source code here, you'll see there's the list, the opening of the list and the closing of the list, and everything inside takes on that color. But everything outside of it, everything in box, heading, some text, more text, that's going to retain the color that we placed on the wrapper. So that's all we mean when we talk about inheritance, is when one style can apply to not only a particular item, but also items that are contained within that item. And again, sort of a related concept to this is the concept of descendant selectors inside of CSS. So inheritance determines how a style will cascade into other styles or into other elements. So it's sort of the C in CSS. Now, when we talk about the concept of precedence, we talk about when there are two rules that could apply to a particular element, which rule should be applied. Now, if you remember back to the very beginning, one of the first things we talked about were there were three different locations that a style could be in. A style could be in an external style sheet. A style could be created in the head section of a document and be an internal style. Or a style can be created and placed in line with the element it's meant to modify. So you can have external styles, internal styles, and inline styles. Now, as a rule, the closer the style is, or the closer the style definition is, to the element that it affects, the more precedence it has. So if I have three different rules, or let's just say two different rules. Let's say I have a rule that says my H1s should be red, and I place that in an external style sheet. And then I create another rule that says that my H1s should be blue, and that's internal. The internal style, since it's closer to the element that it would be formatting, 
would be the style that would take precedence. So let's see how that would work. I'm going to come over here to my external style sheet and I'm going to go ahead and create a style for the H1 tag. Let's move this down a little bit, click over here and type H1. And again, I'm just this is a simple style. I'm just going to affect the color. And I'm going to say that the color is green. And again, that's in an external style sheet there. When I click over here, you're going to see that my heading became green. But now I'm going to click in the source code. And actually, I'm going to come here into my head section. And I'm going to create a style section. Again, we do this when we want to create internal styles in a document. And uh, I don't like internal or inline styles. I think they, uh, they cause more problems than they um, would ever solve. But they're another tool that you can use depending on the um, situation you might find yourself in. So I'm going to say um, in the head section that the H1 style is going to have, and actually I'll make this a little more compact, is going to have a color of, and I'm going to select, uh, um, this yellow here. And I'll go ahead and close that style off. And I already created the closing style for that. So we have a conflicting rule now. The rule in the external style sheet says make the heading green, but the rule here in the internal style sheet says make this heading yellow. When I click over here in my live view, you're going to see that the heading became yellow. And again, that's because it was closer to the source. But if I created it in inline style, that would be even closer. So I'm going to go ahead and say style here. And I'm going to say color is going to be blue. So I created a style for that. And you'll see that my heading now became blue. Because this inline style was even closer to the element that it was formatting than the internal style or the external style sheet that I had attached to this. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that internal style out. So we're left with just the couple of style rules, the internal style and the uh, external style here. Now the precedence applies not only to the exact location, whether it's external, internal, or inline, but as far as these styles go if there are conflicting styles within that location. The style that's listed last will be applied first. So for example, I have my internal style here that's saying that this should be yellow. But I'm going to go ahead and create another style right after it. And I'm going to say the color should be blue. I'm going to go ahead and save that and click over here. And you'll see my heading turn blue. And that's because the order of rules that are, as it's applied, would it would apply any external styles. Then it would look in the head section and apply any internal styles in the order they appear. And then finally, it would apply any inline styles that we might have um, created. So those are the two concepts of precedence and um, inheritance in CSS. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.